Hi everybody, it's OMZ. I've been practicing that for like 30 minutes. I was gonna be like, hi everyone, but that's like super fake. But hi everybody, it's the OMZ on Instagram and Twitter. So we are here to talk about me aesthetics and my boob journey so far. So about a year ago, I had decided that I wanted to get my boobs done because you know I'm a mom and I breastfed and after you breastfed your boobs are gonna be like raisins like no discouragement definitely do it because my daughter is like Einstein it it's crazy how smart she is but definitely be prepared to have a little bag for your boobs after because they are just gonna be like like done so I had decided about a year ago to go and get my boobs done now we we're talking maybe I want to say it was July of 2020 when I was like that's it I cannot stand it like I was we call it coloring in my house so I was coloring one day with you know my partner and he had to like pick it up to like you know be eye to eye with it and I was just like okay no this is not given like I need my body back I need an iOS update it just was not hitting I decided like to get my boobs done and I did so much research I was trying to find places my friends had got them done I'm like no it's time to be a follower go get them girl oh, them boobs so I'm looking I'm looking I'm looking doing all the research I can't find like anything that was within my budget first of all and work that I was like super crazy about having for the rest of my life so just to discuss budgeting issues really quickly my budget for my breasts were about it was like four thousand dollars like on the nose like I did not want to pay a dollar over four thousand I thought it was perfect math two thousand a boob like it just makes sense right no so I had to eventually stretch my budget out a little bit more and um, I tried a couple of different places for consultations. So mind you, some consultations are free. Some of them you gotta pay for. So by the time I had settled on Mia Aesthetics, I had already had maybe like two or three consultations at like $300 each. So I'm just like, well, now I have to kind of like put that back in the pot, you know, cause I was taken from the boob budget. Uh, so my friend was telling me like, you gotta go to me aesthetics, I got mine done, da da da, they do butts, they do boobs, and I know they're really known for butts. And I heard some rumors about them, so I was just like, eh. like I don't know, but her boobs just look so good, and I'm like, all right, cool, like, let me give it a shot. So I go and I have my consultation. Um, It was free, but it was via text message, so it was just like, Okay. Like, I don't even know if I'm talking to the doctor or the surgery coordinator. They're just like, send your boobs front, back, I mean, side, back, whatever. And I'm just like, all right. So then whoever's on the other line of the phone, because I still don't know who it was, was just like, well, you're going to need a lift um, as well as the implant. So um, do you want saline or silicone? And they kind of explained the differences to me and I'm sure you guys are well in your research now So I'm not even gonna get into that mess with y'all saline versus silicone Basically, I chose saline. I heard it was more natural to touch or whatever the case may be and it was more affordable So I'm just like, okay, cool. Let's go with saline. So this is like like I said, back in 2020, in the summer of 2020. Whatever, I, um, this the deposit was $500, so I put down my $500, and I go a year and totally forget about, you know, COVID, just kinda, it was a mess the entire year. So in about February, they hit me up and was just like, um, hey, do you still wanna do your surgery? Like, you never decided on the date, you just kinda put your money down. So I was like, oh yeah, like when, until when do I have, um, to kind of get the surgery so they're like you have until the anniversary of when you put down your security deposit but surprise we're all booked up until then so you're gonna have to extend and if we extend your contract it's an extra fee so now i'm just like mm, it's always somebody with an extra fee like of course extra fees so i'm like all right cool whatever let me just pick a date when's your your next earliest so they tell me august 19th and now we're in 2021 so i'm like all right cool like it seemed far enough away for me not to freak out about it i'm like all right cool august 19th let's do it blah 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 so they're like yeah um here's the bill 
Now, initially the boobs were only supposed to be 4,500. Um, but when I got the bill back in um, February, when I was discussing this with them, it was like 4,900. And when I looked at the breakdown, it, like the price had definitely gone up. So I don't know if I was on a special or whatever, but as I said, the hidden and the extra fees, like they be out to get you. But you know, we was in a pandemic. So it was like, all right, cool. You want an extra little $400? Take it. I got money now. No, I did not. So, but whatever. I paid it. It was fine. And I paid it in full because I just wanted to commit myself. And I strongly suggest like commit yourself because once you put your little $5,000 down, you will not back out. Like you will take your ass your butt on that plane and go and get that surgery because that's like where my mental is. I was putting down, or I thought about putting down like piece by piece by piece, but it was really because I was so nervous. Like I just was panicking and I'm just like, you know what? Let me just pay the whole thing because then I know I'm not gonna like punk out. So I pay the whole thing um, and then there was like no contact until June. So that was like super duper red flags for me. I'm just like, well, where is, why, why is anybody talking to me? Like, how do I not know anything about the surgery that I'm having? Like, and when I tell you, I don't know anything. Like, I don't know how many CCs I'm getting. I didn't talk to the doctor. He probably doesn't even know my name still. Nothing, you know? So I'm just like, like, this is not okay. And then, you know, nerves kind of mess you up too. So I start hitting them up on their regular page like hey this is my name this is my surgery day i haven't i don't know what's going on like i still haven't spoken to my doctor what like what the hell so then they sent me an email saying that i was gonna go and have my surgery in atlanta actually because my doctor had moved to the atlanta office which is just like okay well thanks for letting me know good thing i didn't buy my ticket to miami um so as soon as they told me that i bought my ticket to atlanta and I did not do a recovery house. I got my friend to come with me, um, which is, I mean, I don't know about recovery houses because I've never been to one, but I would just prefer going with somebody that I know, you know, loves me and is gonna take care of me and make sure like, you know, I don't die in my sleep or something, God forbid. So I booked my flight to Atlanta, um, book us a hotel, pay for her flight, and you know, we out here, we're ready to go. And then I'm like, okay, well, there wasn't really much contact after telling me that I was going to get my surgery done in Atlanta. Now we're at 30 days later. So now we're in June, this June, like the first. And I'm just like, yo, I am sick of the non-communication that you guys are giving. So I wrote the Atlanta page and the Miami page like, listen, you guys have my money. I need to know what's going on. I still don't know what size I'm getting. I don't know anything about this surgery. I don't know what post-op procedures are. I don't know what day I'm supposed to fly in. So all of my friends that had got boobs just told me like, you gotta go in the day before to get your post-op. So I had already booked the flight for the day before. I was just kind of being dramatic. So then they have finally hit me back and they were like, oh, your surgery coordinator switched and here's her name and her phone number and she's gonna go ahead and give you a call. So I'm like, okay, cool. So she calls me, I missed the call because I was at work and the voicemail was just something like, basically it's just um, 60 days, you're gonna get, 60 days before you're going to get your um, blood work, paperwork, and you gotta go and get it done. So pro tip, pro tip, what am I talking about? It's no pro tips because I um, am not a pro, but if you have Medicaid, all that blood work is free otherwise you're gonna have to pay per test but that's just me um so then i'm like okay cool i don't feel like i need to speak to her anymore because once i get the blood work done i'll go ahead and um send it to her and then she'll give me further instructions so this is what the paperwork basically looks like i don't know what all of this means but i'm sure my doctor will i just told my doctor like hey i need a physical i haven't had one um this year yet and I need one for school because I am in college and it was fine it was absolutely fine I went ahead I did it I sent it and now I'm still waiting for their response so just so you know um, I'm again in the beginning of the boob journey and the highlights would be prices do change locking your date and um, B 
be on them as far as communication if you're gonna go to meet aesthetics because you can fall through the cracks and they won't hit you up until 60 days before your surgery which by then I mean who knows you can have plans or you could have forgotten or it's just be on top of them the doctor that I'm going to is dr. gray uh, he his work looks like more of butt stuff from what I can see on his page and I guess that's what the the um, me aesthetics is known for but his boob stuff doesn't look that bad um, actually it looks pretty good because I wouldn't go to somebody that doesn't look that bad sometimes I just don't be liking the gas people but it looks okay it looks good see I did it again but it looks pretty good and that's who I'm going to once again haven't had a conversation with this man so we'll see how it goes but for reference um, my boobs and I probably should have did this in the beginning but Breastfeeding boobs, let me just show y'all real quick how it looks. So, I mean it's not really a big difference from when I take the bra off to when I take the when I take the bra off to when I have it on. But you guys can see, like, let me put my shirt down. This boob is huge in comparison to this boob. So when you breastfeed like one of your boobs, the baby likes to latch onto one boob. The left one for me so as you can tell it's just like it's just not where it should be you know they should be on the same line they're just not one is like super small one's like a C and one's like a big B it just was not giving like I need my boobs to be up here like before I get to the room my boobs need to be there before me saying hello to everybody um I want them to be like cleavage not huge though but just like right here like I don't want to wear bras I would like to wear like net shirts um when I come back from my surgery I want my boobs to be so high that I could fall asleep like this no neck pillow needed just sleeping on my on my boobs Oof. I gotta work on my language if I'm gonna keep doing this but anyways guys these are my real boobs <laughs> they are just a lost cause so I will update you guys on the rest of the journey and then I will, you know, let you guys know how it goes. We'll do pre-op day, we'll do the actual day, we'll do post-op, we'll do all that. So just stay tuned on my Me Aesthetics review. Today I'm getting my blood work drawn for my surgery with Me Aesthetics. The surgery date is August 19th and it's July 9th, so I'm cutting it close to that 45 day mark that you have to get your blood work drawn. I was actually waiting to see if my um, health insurance will cover it and it turns out that it does. So the way it works is um, when they send you your blood work, there's usually like um, a clinic associated with it. Sometimes it's LabCorp, sometimes it's Quest Diagnostic. They give you your account number um, for one or for both if the surgeon's office works with both. And then once you get your blood work drawn, um, they'll put in your account number for your surgery and then it'll send immediately to your surgeon's office. So you have to get it done 45 days before your surgery with Mia or they will cancel your surgery and reschedule for a $500 fee. So I'm cutting it close and I really got to get my behind over there to get it done. Um, again, the surgery is on the 19th. I'm staying until the 23rd. I actually fly in on the 18th for my pre-op. Um, that hasn't, the times for that hasn't been given to me yet. But I booked it anyway just because, you know, their communication is not the best. Um, and I'm staying until the 23rd. My friends who got the surgery said that it really wasn't that bad and they were able to fly back. Um, obviously be on light duty after so I'm hoping that I'm the same case my pain tolerance is pretty high so I'm not worried but anyway let's go get my blood drawn hey guys so just an update from the doctor um, I'm actually in LabCorp and they recommended LabCorp or Quest Diagnostics to do my paperwork which is crazy because LabCorp actually does not do um, the second part of the form which is the physical part they don't have doctors here they just draw blood so I do have to go to an urgent care to get this taken care of um, it's just like allergies and like measurements and stuff like that this one 
I don't know if you guys can see it, but this one is like your HIV test, your CBC counts, um, and things like that, urine analysis. So this can get done at LabCorp, um, but the second one cannot. That's a little confusing because all the paperwork came together, but it's fine. We're already here, and next stop is going to be MedExpress Clinic. Hey guys, so they told me to be here at um, 4.45 and as you guys can see, the parking lot is completely empty. Um, we've been here since 4.40, it's now, what time is it, 4, 4.57 and I'm waiting here and there's somebody there, um, but we're just kind of waiting outside, so yeah. Great service. <laughs> so I could feel like definitely stuff was removed and then replaced. And when I touch it, it's very hard to the touch. They don't let you wear like nails on like this finger. So I just took all my nails off. No jewelry, no eating eight to 10 hours before. And well, they make you wear like either a dress or a robe so i chose a maxi robe and like i had to like lift it up halfway because as you can see i bled a little bit down here and i bled through my bandages but this is how they look right now um they're still swollen so they're supposed to go down loads and i just pray they do because this one definitely more swollen than this one and i just pray that it's not like the silicone is in the wrong place or god knows what but they're supposed to drop two so i got 280 cc so a little less than a full c cup and i originally started off like a 34 d so he had to remove quite a bit and then stuff it up with some more and i didn't get silicone i got saline i don't know if i said silicone or saline but saline is what i got whole lot of pain guys um they gave me oxys and i don't really take medication like that like at all actually but it hurt really bad and i took one and that's how i'm able to do this video because i'm on one just one though hopefully like once it wears off i'll be able to gauge the pain and do an update video for you guys and then i did buy like a load of um extra strength tylenol so I might just pump myself with that to avoid the oxy because don't nobody trying to be addicted. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so I can't really lift um, my arms. I can't really go to the bathroom by myself. can't really wipe. Um, my arms are a little on the longer side. So like I've managed to like wrap the tissue around my fingers and kind of like pat dry. Um, but like to go all the way down in there, it's like not going to happen. Um, God forbid I have to poop today because that's definitely not happening. And I don't want my friend to help me, like, you know, wipe my booty. But obviously she will if she has to. Um, what else? You have to be on liquids completely um, after you do the surgery. So I did, like, you know, those baby fruit pouches and jello. And um, I haven't done the soup yet. So it's just cold food right now for the first 24 hours. And then. Tomorrow I can eat like soup and like soft noodly stuff and then you just add as you can tolerate after that. So I'm gonna be real hungry very soon. Hungry and in pain. What a great recipe. I'm drinking a lot of water because I got OD cotton mouth and I can still kind of taste the anesthesia in my mouth. No matter what I eat, I can taste the anesthesia. So yeah, that's it. You have to totally sit up. I don't know if you guys can see my bed. Yeah. What the fuck is that? That's just a limbo, I promise. But yeah, you gotta sit up. So I've been sleeping legit like this. No, that's so ugly. I've been sleeping like this. And whenever I have a face itch or anything, like, it's a struggle. And I have one right here, like, on the side. And Penny's in the shower, so yeah once the oxy wears off i'll do another quick video depending on how the pain is to update you guys and i'll just
just keep letting you know how I feel. What's up here, by the way, is markers. They have to draw all over you. But yeah, thanks for listening. I hope this helps somebody. Hey guys, it's your girl OMZ and the girls, or the twins. I'm not sure what I'm going to call them yet, but they are here and I love it. I put on the same outfit for you guys so that you can see the difference. And the difference is colossal. Like, if I turn to the side, like, this is how they look. They're sitting up. Like, this is without the bra, mind you. So, yeah. They are here. And I'm so excited to share them with the world. So, what you see right here is, like, some tape around my areolas, which they do, like, cut and make them smaller. I don't know if you guys knew this. I did not know. And my areolas were pretty, like, big before. And now they're, like, little tiny quarters. Um, so, the scarring goes around the areolas, and then it kind of does that anchor shape, because I got the lift, too. I am going to try silicone tape once this tape falls off by itself, because I heard that it makes the scarring kind of go away, or lighter or whatever so i just wanted to wrap up the mia aesthetics review for you guys where should we start so we already discussed kind of all the miscommunications and all of that and um i would say what stuck out for me the most was the treatment that i got at the center when i first arrived so for my pre-op appointment the girl was just like not it she was like what are you here to get and I was like, oh, I'm here. No, she's like, what are you here for? And I was like, um, my pre-op appointment. And she was like, what are you getting? And I'm like, ew, like, I'm here, I'm here to get my boobs done. Like, girl, this is private. Like, why are you all loud? Like, do you just, I know we all here to get something done, but girl, like, first of all, check your attitude and your volume. Like, why are you up here? We are inside, use your indoor voices. But then I got to the medical assistant. She was lovely. She answered all my questions. We was laughing, kiki keying. I would say that everybody who was like on the medical side was really nice. Like the medical assistant, the doctor, even the nurses, the anesthesiologist, like they were all really nice. It was the front of the house that was really a problem for me. And I know we kind of discussed this and I kind of showed you guys like um, that we were standing outside and it was like, then it was dark outside um and they told us to come um 15 to 20 minutes before so that would put us at like 4 40 4 45 and the surgery was scheduled for five o'clock so this woman is literally like sitting down at her desk staring at me my guest and another patient like completely ignoring us and i'm talking these are huge glass windows and we were like right in her direct line of sight and it's just like, you know, this is my first time having a surgery. I don't know about the other ladies, so I'm not going to speak for her. But I will say that coming into it, I kind of, I'm full of anxiety. I'm scared. You know, you hear horror stories where people die on the table. So it's like for me to get that first taste of like so much attitude so early in the morning. And I get it because I'm not a morning person either. But people are paying thousands of dollars to be here to kind of make me aesthetics make you up to be something whoever you are in your head basically and i'm a paying customer bottom line why are you treating me like that and then she opened the door she didn't even say good morning like she was just not not it um and i noticed that kind of pattern because as the other morning staff started to kind of like trickle in it was just like attitudes 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 like it just was not a, a good taste and it heightened my anxiety like I was just like oh my god like what if the doctor's like this like you know I was genuinely scared and I don't know like it just wasn't for me I would I would go back to that doctor but that office specifically I definitely would not go there ever again like the office staff I would give it two out of ten um just because the only thing left to do was kind of curse me out because you, you kind of did everything else you know what i'm saying but whatever the surgery went phenomenally so when i went in for the initial consultation the doctor comes in he draws on your chest and then he's like okay you ready like you got any questions and i really didn't have any questions other than size which i got a 280 to 300 so it's small full c's 
but I have a small frame, so it just looks better if you guys want to look again. But anyway, um, then I go, um, he's like, yeah, lay on the table, whatever. So I go, I lay on the table and they're kind of like talking to me, but I just totally tuned them out and I started praying because I was really scared. Like people, stuff happens. And I know my body reacts to anesthesia like horribly. Like I'm super bloated for days. I'm nauseous, I feel sick. And immediately after I wake up, it's like all the pain just shoots back. And I don't know if that's for everybody, but I have a really low pain tolerance. So I just knew like I was gonna be hurting when I woke up. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. And then when I woke up, I was already in the compression bra and I had boobs and it was super painful and I was crying and the nurses were excellent. And they were like, it's okay, like you look great. I know it hurts, but you look amazing. Like they were so nice. So yeah, I would say to, to rate the overall experience, um, factoring in the lack of communication in the beginning, but then the great phone etiquette, um, from the girls in the Miami office and then the awful customer service in the actual Atlanta office but then the great um, doctor and his work and then the great aftercare I would have to give it a six like and I know that that's kind of pretty low or I don't know is that low I just feel like customer service is everything and that was a big part of that score. Like the the work itself is amazing, but that customer service is just not giving. I definitely, like I said, I would not go to that office again, but the doctor definitely. I mean, maybe it's a different experience in Miami because I know that a lot of other celebrities endorse me aesthetics. And like I said, the girls over the phone were lovely. They were just as excited as I was when we were discussing the surgery and um, scheduling the post-op dates and all of that. Like, how are you feeling? How are you? Blah, blah, blah. Um, but the actual staff there is like, as you can see, I cannot stop talking about how bad the staff was. But the doctor was amazing. Like, Dr. Gray is the GOAT, and he really put me together. So, um, I'm going to do another video of, like, Q&A. My friends had a lot of questions for me, and I'm going to write them all down and kind of answer them for you guys, because I'm sure that a lot of people that don't have surgery have the same kind of questions. And then if you do have more questions, like, just comment below, and I'll do another video. And I wish you guys good luck on your surgeries.